This is an overview of my pulse power generator. Um, basically what it consists of is a giant capacitor and a spark gap switch and a blast box. And what I can use, I can do three different things with it. I can use it to shrink coins. I can use it to uh, crush cans. I could also use it to launch hard disk drive platters. But before I go into that anymore, I think I'll just give an overview of what's going on here. Uh, you can see the capacitor down here. It's the big gray brick. And I'll slowly move around so maybe you can see that better. There's the end of the capacitor. Capacitor weighs about 220 pounds. It can store up to 24,000 joules if it was fully charged to 22,000 volts. Moving up, this is the spark gap switch. Um, it's all manual, it's spring loaded, there's no electronics involved. Essentially, I can it by pulling this back and latching it and when I release it it slams into there. You can see the extremely heavy copper bus bars used because this can handle currents of you know 50 to 100 thousand amps and possibly even higher. And then that all feeds into this blast cage, which is this black and green box on the top. The black parts are made out of 3 8 inch sheet steel. And the green parts are G10 fiberglass and HDPE. Those end pieces have to be an insulator because as you can see, the uh, electrodes run inside of there. And the capacitor is charged by a neon sign transformer, which you can see down here, the blue box, 15,000 volts. And to measure the charge, there's actually two meters. One is for input charge, and the other one is to measure the charge when you're discharging it after you're done. And after you're done, to take care of any residual charge, have these this bank of eight power resistors, and this switch here is used to uh, shunt the charge from the capacitor into those power resistors. I'm going to put the camera down for a second. So I'm going to open the the blast cage to show what's inside of it. You can see the inside of the blast cage lid, the kind of shrapnel on there from the coin shrimp operations. look down inside the blast box you can see you can see the shrapnel on the sides from the sacrificial coils being blown away but you can see these two electrodes this is where the workpiece is attached I mean here's a typical one for a coin shrink it would attach you know between here And as I stated earlier, these walls, so it's a two layer sandwich, the white is HDPE and the green is G10, 3 8 inch G10. Now I mentioned that it can be used for disc launching and 
um, can crushing also. Here are the attachments I use for that. Here's the disc launching attachment. And this is a spiral coil. And the hard disk drive platter, you just lay it right on there. And it's exactly the same size, five and a quarter inches. Here's the attachment I use for can crushing. It's just three and a half turns of uh, nine gauge magnet wire. And the can goes right through that hole. And I have I do have some other videos showing can crushing and uh, disc launching, so you can view those if you like. Um, I guess the other thing I mentioned this down here, this is the full wave bridge rectifier, which looks like a you know square, it's high voltage diodes. It takes the output of the neon sign transformer and it converts it to DC to charge the capacitor. Um, I think that's about all I have to say. I'm going to make another video showing a coin shrink operation sometime in the future. So, hope you found this informative. <laughs>